Welcome to my show, Athena Autistic Artist College. Hello, Edward. Hello, nice. how are you? Thank you for coming on to my show and taking your time. Um, can you give me like a brief introduction about yourself and what it was like for you growing up? Sure. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm an attorney who practices in Woodbury, Long Island. I represent people who have special needs, and I represent people who are injured in accidents. So I have two types of practices. I grew up in Massapequa, Long Island, and I played football in high school and college. And uh, I went to law school here on Long Island, a tour of law school. What led you on your path to law? What inspired you to learn? I I had a, uh, a family member, an uncle, who became an attorney uh, as a second career in life. Uh, and I watched him travel uh, through law school and move into the world of practicing attorneys. And I admired what he did. And I thought I had a skill set that matched. And therefore, after working two years as an auditor on Wall Street, I decided uh, to uh, pursue a degree in law. And I left my job and went full-time to law school. Uh, awesome. So, Edward, um, from that path as a lawyer and helping people with disabilities and injured, maybe you could share your story, um, your co deep connections with your son and, and has autism. My, my beautiful son, Edward, is now 25. He was born in 1998, and he was the blessing of my life. And he was a uh, particularly a, a blessing because he he joined us three years after my my dad passed suddenly at the age of 52. So the joy uh, was quickly tempered when we realized that he was having some struggles, and then by the age of three he was fully diagnosed as being on the autism spectrum. And at that time, I realized that um, our world would change a bit. Uh, Edward was going to have a different sort of childhood than, uh, than, than I had, uh, had planned. Um, but um, 25 years later, I realized how blessed I was by, by my son, not just because I have this beautiful son, but because of his ability to overcome challenges and how his mom and I have become advocates in, in different corners of Edward's world. Uh, she is a wonderful mom and she does terrific, terrific things for him and helping him become the best person he can be. And I, I've been an advocate for Edward and other children like him for programs in the school district where I served on the school board for 15 years in South Huntington, Long Island and through work at the Cody Center for Autism uh, and, and through my work with Autism Speaks. Uh, and it's been a wonderful journey to uh, become a voice for people who may sometimes have trouble fully communicating while they advocate for themselves. And so I've been lending my skills as an attorney to the population of people who are uh, on the spectrum. Um, that's beautiful, a new direction. When you learned about autism, how did it touch your heart, you know, like your emotions, you know, it's a lot to learn. And experiencing my son's journey, um, I, I always like to say made me a better man because I appreciated that the, sometimes our larger problems are not as large as we originally expected them, thought they would be. And um, living uh, with this beautiful child who is working hard just to, you know, recover words and use language and, and navigate the world um, in a different way um, made me realize how blessed I am. And it, and it encouraged me to uh, submer submerge myself in Edward's world and, and learn about some of the simpler joys uh, that life has, a bike ride, a walk in the park, uh, walk on the beach. Sometimes these things we take for granted, and when you see them through through Edward's eyes and other people who are on the spectrum, it looks 
different, sometimes more vivid, more beautiful, and definitely more rewarding. Definitely, yes. What are some of his routines and, and his skills of his gifts that he has? Well, Edward has a particular uh, knack for art. Uh, he is a um, he likes to draw uh, many things. Particularly, likes to draw the clues from Blue's Clues, uh, which was his favorite program as a as a young child. And if you give him a, a pad and crayons or a pad and markers, he can pretty much draw just about anything on request. Uh, and that, that's his particular skill. He, he works at the, uh, he works, he's, his program is at the Nicholas Center in Port Washington. And he, through that, he works for Spectrum Designs, where he folds shirts and cleans the premises and with the assistance of an aide, he has, um, you know, has a meaningful life outside of our home. And uh, I know one of the skill set, one of his skill set is making people around him feel just a bit happier. He's a very happy young man. Definitely. And the joy of him graduating high school, that brought happiness to your heart. It did, in particular, because I was on the school board for so many years in South Huntington. Yes. So I was able to hand my son his diploma, and it was one of the most wonderful moments of my life. Oh, that's beautiful. That's so touching. And that's definitely a, a deep connection there. So beautiful that you can represent that his diploma that brought joy to your heart. Is your son um, sound sensitive, like certain sounds, like loud sounds or children being loud, you know, sirens? Very much so. Very much so. And he, he, he does uh, adapt. Uh, when he hears baby crying, he'll say, oh, the baby's crying. You used to cry when you were a baby, talking about himself. Um, or if we go to a hockey game or a ball game and there's a big old celebration or you know, the foghorn going off, he'll cover his ears at first. But he adapts, and he does carry earplugs, uh, and he, he knows how to use them when he needs them. So he'll ask to use the earplugs. And sometimes he'll just put them in himself, which is wonderful because he's self-advocating. Wonderful that he learned that to do that. Um, it's wonderful he learned that to do those things on his own. Well, that's it. That's all his wonderful mom. She's amazing. And she's taught him a lot of the uh, self-care skills that he possesses today. And uh, as much as I'd like to take credit for any of them, she's solely responsible for all of those great techniques that he employs. Does he design the shirts too at Spectrum Designs? I don't believe he's part of the design team just yet, but I know there have been times where we've discussed uh, him doing that because of his great drawing skills. Um, when the um, when COVID struck and I, I, I completed my, my term with Autism Speaks, uh, we were discussing Edward designing some of the shirts for our Edwards Army team. And we were thinking about doing that next year. That would be good. That would be great. Maybe you could put him on some shows at the library. To hang it up. So Edward is, Edward is part of the Spirit of Huntington uh, art program in, in Huntington, which is uh, Eric Priest and Michael Katakis. They, 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 they have a wonderful program housed in our former South Huntington library. Uh, and the Spirit of Huntington was founded by Eric and, and it's uh, operated by Michael Katakis. And Eric is an artist who is on the spectrum who started an art program uh, in an abandoned gas station. And um, after uh, they moved to the library, we connected with uh, the program and uh, we developed a community-based art program on Saturday mornings. And through the last four years or five years or so, um, there have been art shows in the city uh, and, and different businesses and, and in the Spirit of Huntington Art Gallery itself. So Edward's prints have been featured in some of those art shows and it's nothing more thrilling than to see a sold sign tacked onto one of your son's pictures. 
That's wonderful. That happened for him. Does he like That's to wonderful. write? Um, he, he does not have a particular uh, love of writing. Um, he can write. He can read. Um, but if you would ask him for his preference by far, drawing and and it is his preference. He does do a heck of a word search, so he, he understands words and he can find them in the thicket of of a jumble of letters. Uh, but um, he's not somebody who's going to sit and write to express himself. He's going to draw to express himself. Yes, um, he connects with the arts too. That's beautiful. He does. Yep, something that um, that you can write and. You could write what he says. And I often do um, write and publish uh, essays or, or short stories about being a father of a child with autism. Um, I published an article called Today I Bought a Met about starting with my son a baseball program and other parents in South Huntington uh, through the St. Elizabeth Parish Little League. Um, the, I published an article called um, God and the Special Needs Child, One Father's Journey of Faith, about our, our journey to create a, a religious instruction program at, at St. Elizabeth's Parish. Um, and there's, there's, there, there, are, there are several others. One in particular is on the, um, uh, the it's, it's listed as a, as a parent resource in one of, I think, National Institute of Health, and it's called to Fixing the Hole in My Bucket. And through, through my writing, I'm able to or at least express to others uh, the journey that uh, Edward and I together and his mom share. That's beautiful. And the emotions is unspoken for. <laughs> Definitely. Walking, you know, hand in hand, yes. Is um, it's very deeply in touch with what you know others don't understand, but it's it's a it's just a different road, but it's also beautiful with autism. I think it's it's my 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 job maybe as a as a parent uh, to articulate some of the experiences that that my son and others who are on the spectrum. Um, may experience, whether it's through the school system or their adult lives now or just in the day-to-day -day existence of building meaningful lives with a, a different way of communicating. And uh, giving voice to that, I think, is very important. And perhaps that's why um, I was uh, fortunately chosen to be Edward's dad. Definitely. Yes, the angels, everything. God is, is wanting you to have them. It's my blessing. Father. Oh, yes, that's beautiful. And to share that in the owl in the background, the purple owl, that's my painting. I painted that. My, I painted that myself. Thank you. As something maybe... You know, as a lawyer and uh, for people as an artist is how to get their work out there and learning who to trust. So maybe that's something that you can do as a lawyer to help others. It, the, it's always my, my desire to make sure that anybody who's living their mean, best life, whether it's uh, in, a, in, a, in you know, at Spectrum Designs like my son, doing the wonderful things that you do, your drawings, your radio program, you yes. know, getting, making sure that everybody knows um, that differing abilities is simply differing abilities. And we all have different skill set and different manners of communication, making sure we all have access to the joys in life. Oh, definitely. Yes. Yes, beautiful. And artists, we connect through, you know, like I said, perform arts, like acting, theater, writing stories, putting, our, learning to put our thoughts down paper. 
to give the world a different way to see autism and who we are. I, I, I recently became a member of a board um, that advocates for people on the spectrum who want to do voiceover acting work. And it's fascinating. Yes. It's a wonderful organization and it, and it does so many, you know, terrific things for, for people who have a desire and also a skill set for that type of work. You know, the difficulty sometimes is, it's like you say, it's, it's the difficulty of making sure everyone understands that we may have, you know, differences, but that we still are productive and we still have something to offer from whether it's our art, uh, whether it's, you know, writing, whether it's, it's just so many uh, wonderful things, but it's about making sure we have access to them. Everybody around us has access to us, and we have access to the world at large. Yes. Voice acting is wonderful. What location? It's a national um, organization. Um, we, we, it's the AVA, we call it AVA. And um, I think it's the, 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 the short term is um, for autism and voice actors. Um, it's a, um, it really is a, an organization. It's just, it's, it's, it's made me feel very good about the fact that we have, you know, reached a, a population that nobody would automatically think um, would be, you know, uh, uh, suited for voice acting. But what we've tried to make sure is that, um, People who employ voice actors understand that while delivering direction and and and, and marks uh, to voice actors might be a little different, look a little different for actors who are, are on the spectrum. Um, that doesn't mean that with the appropriate adjustments, they don't have themselves a whole bucket of wonderful talent to draw from. Yes, definitely. Yep. We write our own stories, who we are. We do. Yes, it's beautiful. Um, I learned to write poetry. And I bet you that was a wonderful opportunity for you to express in a way that you might not otherwise feel perfectly comfortable doing. Definitely, I, I enjoyed that. How do you balance your life as a lawyer father as an autistic son well it's challenging um, I'm in a partner at a firm called Salinger Sack Kimmel and Bavaro my um, my my employers the managing attorney is Jeff Kimmel and the managing uh, uh, the lead attorney is Joseph Bavaro and they both are wonderful in um, supporting what sometimes is a, a, a different schedule um, Plus, I have a very good working relationship with um, my staff and, and, and certainly with um, Edward's mom. And we are blessed to have both of Edward's grandmothers still with us, so they, they lend support as well. So it's a team effort, but it certainly starts when, it, when you're talking about employment for somebody who's advocating uh, for his son or you know, for others. It, it starts with who you work with and for. And I'm very blessed to work at a firm that supports all of my pursuits, including special education or special needs advocacy and, and, and whatever needs my son may have on a given day. Definitely. That's wonderful that you can work together as a team. That's important. Very much so. So what you would like to share as a lawyer and with the autistic son to help others out there who's going to be diagnosed in the future in their direction? Well, I think it's important for all families uh, with children who are newly diagnosed and at school age that they, they do make certain that they, um, they, they do as much uh, uh, advocacy through, with the help of others. It's a whole new language when you're in the school system. IEP, CSE, all the mnemonics. Um, attorneys who 
to do that type of work like myself and there are others um, it can can help you navigate it there's a wonderful website um, and it's a uh, uh, um, rights law from Pam and Peter Wright it's a national organization that provides great up uh, great information to access for parents with the click of a mouse uh, I know the autism speaks websites has new parent kits and then there are people who are older and diagnosed when they're not school age and it's they've, they've always struggled with some limitations uh, but they never could put their finger on why and um, even there I think there are organ you know that reaching out to others, organizations, or at least knowing to, finding their way to people, whether they be people like you, people like me, people like, you know, at the, at the Autism Speaks. Uh, it's, I think it's always the starting point. We, we you know, uh, it takes a village. And not understanding that we have social limitations as people who are on the spectrum, some social things that have to be navigated. And, um, you know, reaching out to others isn't always the easiest thing in the world, but um, fortunately, people on the other side of it, people like me, who have a son, will, will often reach out to anybody who's newly diagnosed and say, hey, let me help you. Because that's the true gift of, um, of this, of my son at least, is that he's given me this mission statement, this personal mission statement to make sure that nobody feels alone. Was it easy for you uh, as a writer through your law, law degree uh, to, to know what to ask for in the education system and how you see I think it was easier for me um, than it would be for others, but it was certainly not easy. Um, it was challenging because it was a whole new language. And then once Edward became an adult and he's in the OPWDD system, it's a whole different language. And I'm still learning that one. Um, it's, so it's challenging. It's, it's, it is hard for me and I'm, I'm trained as an attorney and I'm a writer, uh, and an advocate and I research. Um, so if it's challenging for me, it's probably even more challenging for somebody not so professionally trained. Um, but that's not to suggest that I haven't witnessed advocates who have no professional training, who are fierce advocates and who know more about this by far than people like me because they've lived it, they've breathed it, and they've submerged themselves in it. So it's available. It's just a matter of how each of us learn. Yes, because everybody learns differently. And it's important for the, you know, the team at the schools to give parents time to... to find it is, and I think in this... In this day and age, school districts have, have been very embracing. They've learned that these that differing abilities and how to reach children. Uh, we live in a much greater time than, say, back in the early 70s when there was no such thing as special education laws. And uh, we are blessed. But that doesn't mean it's not always smooth or always easy. It's not. Definitely a challenge. What you like to share for others on autism, for our world to learn from you? Well, I probably best can share the parents' perspectives because that's the perspective I occupy. And my, my, one, my one message to parents of, of individuals on the spectrum, whether they're children or adults, is that um, this is a, it's a joyful journey, even though it's sometimes challenging because of limitations and, you know, we have plans for the type of parents we were going to be and it, those, those plans don't always play out. But what I tell parents is that this is a, uh, this is going to make you better people and it's going to make your life much more enriched because your, your direct connection to another soul who's going to need the kind of guidance, assistance, presence uh, that sometimes we lose when our children go off to college and marriage and their own lives. Um, we don't get to spike the ball and celebrate a job well done or a touchdown. Um, but in that, knowing that, you know, a, a young man who, uh, if, if he was born many, many years ago, might be even institutionalized and instead he's productive, happy, content, 
there's great reward in that. And uh, I, I tell parents um, that there's, there's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, sunrise at the end of this. Definitely, yes, because, like you said, uh, even though they're not going to go to college, but there's other things you can do with them. There's other things they can enjoy life with, and um, that's an amazing journey right there. And well, there are there are there are there are students who I know real well. I know a young man who just recently uh, went to uh, SUNY Purchase, and. Uh, He's navigating it. I know there's a lot of folks on the spectrum who are high functioning who can uh, succeed even going away to college, but that puts a bigger burden on us as parents to check in every day. And you know, we always will, will be invested in their day because we're their, you know, we, we are their guardians and we will be until our last breath. Yes, definitely. And that's because you're connected as you're hand in hand with each other, you work together. That we do, and it's it's that connection that, that warms me every day when I think, you know, some of the worst things of my day were happening, and then I turn to my son and I say, wow, gosh, he, uh, he said good morning without prompt. So I guess it's a really good day after all now, isn't it? Yes, because they learned to find their words and they can be moments that you could hear a beautiful phrase from him that usually he don't speak it on a day-to-day -day basis. That's right. Yeah, you know, and that's the words any parent is waiting to hear. Wow. Well, thank you for all that you do. You're welcome, and thank you for coming on to my show. It was a blessing to hear your stories, and for others, our listeners, to to learn from you. Well, thank you again, and I really appreciate the opportunity, and I'm humbled that you asked me to join you, and I, I, I appreciate all that you do and getting the message out there for the rest of the world. You're welcome. So thank you. I'm Maria. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for my next edition.